Hello everyone. Today we are going to be discussing about gout. The first question we ask ourselves is, what is gout? Gout is a condition characterized by disturbed uric acid metabolism. The second point, which is fairly important, is MSU, that is monosodium urate crystals. These crystals deposit within various tissues in the body, like the articular, periarticular. and the subcutaneous tissues gout is also characterized by recurrent attacks of acute arthritis multiple attacks of these acute arthritis will then lead to late stage complications which we will discuss later now let us learn about the pathophysiology of gout the first question would be where does the uric acid in our body come from the answer purines which are adenine and guanine both of them are utilized in the synthesis of dna as nucleotides adenosine monophosphate and guanosine monophosphate they are both converted to adenosine and guanosine via the enzyme 5 prime nucleotidase adenosine is additionally converted to inosine via the enzyme ada which is adenosine deaminase Now, inosine and guanosine are then converted to hypoxanthine and guanine by the enzyme purine nucleoside phosphorylase. Both of these then get converted to xanthine, hypoxanthine via the enzyme xanthine oxidase, and guanine via the enzyme guanine deaminase. Xanthine is then converted into uric acid via the enzyme xanthine oxidase. Thus, the uric acid in our body is formed. Now, let us learn about hyperuricemia and its causes. The causes can either be overproduction of uric acid, which accounts for ten percent, and under excretion of uric acid, which accounts for ninety percent of the cases. Under overproduction, we have dietary intake or alcohol intake. high cell turnover states as in myeloproliferative disorders or lymphomas or cases where there is massive cell lysis as in tumor lysis this cell lysis results in the release of nucleic acids it can also be genetic causes under excretion the first cause is genetic the second can be chronic kidney disease then there is insulin resistance and an important point is drug induced causes as in thiazides loop diuretics aspirin cyclosporin and parazinamide all of these prevent the excretion of uric acid from the kidney now that there is hyperuricemia in our body let us understand how and all it can present the normal level of uric acid in the body is 3.5 to 7 mg per deciliter there can be silent tissue deposition where the patient is completely symptom free it can present as gout which is our topic for the day now for gout to present usually the uric acid level has to be more than 9 mg per deciliter which gives the patient a chance of 4.5% of developing gout it can have renal presentation wherein there is urate stones that form again for those to form usually the level has to be more than 13 in males and 10 in females hyperuricemia can also present as a cardiovascular event now that there is hyperuricemia in the body let us understand how the urate crystals form imagine this beaker to be filled with blood which is saturated with uric acid a super saturated solution usually results in the precipitation of the molecules and the same thing happens here the uric acid upon super saturation results in the formation of urate crystals these urate crystals will induce an intense inflammatory reaction in the tissue where they are formed leading to the clinical features that we see Usually the most commonly involved location is the first metatarsophalangeal joint. There are specific reasons why this joint is more commonly involved. The first is because of its peripheral location. The temperature over here is usually cooler than the other joints. As well as the synovial fluid is usually acidic in its pH. 
in urate crystals require both these conditions that is low temperature as well as low pH for their precipitation. Now imagine this to be a normal synovial joint. This to be the synovial cavity. These are the articular surfaces. Now the synovium is lined on the inside by the synoviocytes which act as nourishment as well as macrophages for the joint. These are the urate crystals. Now these urate crystals upon formation result in the synovial macrophages to induce an intense inflammatory reaction via interleukin 1 beta and TNF alpha. Both these molecules result in the recruitment of multiple neutrophils which arrive at the joint via chemotaxis. These neutrophils will release free radicals, leukotrienes as well as prostaglandins. All these will result in an acute inflammatory reaction and this is what presents to us as an acute flare or an acute gouty arthritis. Now these free radicals are important because they help in the formation of urate crystals as well. The hydrogen ions along with the urate anions will result in the formation of urate crystals. These crystals have increased precipitation and decreased solubility in the synovial fluid resulting in the formation of more and more urate crystals which leads to a continuous cycle of inflammation. These neutrophils then also get lysed and upon lysis they release the enzymes that are contained within them the lysosomal enzymes which are mainly proteases. These proteases will act on the articular cartilage and cause articular cartilage destruction heralding the onset of destructive arthropathy of chronic gout. <clears throat> the interleukin 1 beta and TNF alpha also cause the activation of osteoclasts. These osteoclasts will act on the bone and cause resorption resulting in the destruction of the bone. The urate crystals along with the neutrophils, the lysed neutrophils, the nucleic acids from the neutrophils and the foreign body giant cells that form during the inflammatory reaction. An amalgamation of all these will result in the formation of a structure which is known as the tophis. This tophis is a clinical hallmark of chronic gout which deposits within the various tissues as mentioned before. The next thing is let us learn about the clinical features of gout. The first one as we have discussed can be asymptomatic hyperuricemia. The second phase can be acute gouty arthritis which is because of the acute inflammation that we saw in pathophysiology. Acute gouty arthritis usually presents as a sudden onset pain which develops overnight. The involved joint is usually characterized by inflammatory changes over it like rubber, calor, dollar and tumor. There can also be systemic features because of the release of the interleukin 1 and TNF alpha. Patient may also have fever and chills. The third phase is the interval gout. In this phase, the patient is usually symptom free. The fourth phase or the final phase is where the patient presents with chronic tophaceous gout because of the chronic inflammation. It is characterized by two clinical features. The first is there is destructive arthropathy of the involved joints. And the second feature as we have discussed is the tophi. There is deposition of the tophi in various tissues. Some examples of these tissues are helix of the ear, the skin over the olecranon and the knee, the nasal cartilage as well as the kidneys.
Now the investigations that we will do in a patient that presents with gout are the first is obvious serum uric acid level. The second one is where we will do an aspiration of the involved joint and do a synovial fluid analysis. On microscopic examination of this joint fluid, we will see needle shaped crystals which are characteristic of urate crystals. These crystals are strongly negatively birefringent. The third point is radiology. On doing an x-ray of the involved joint, we will see multiple features. Some features are mentioned below. Here we can see a deposition of the tophus within the soft tissue of the involved joint. There is destructive arthropathy of the involved joint. And there can also be multiple lytic punched out lesions. Now treatment of acute gout. In the first acute stage, the main goal is to relieve the pain of the patient and to reduce the inflammation that is ongoing because of the uric acid crystals. We can prescribe NSAIDs, corticosteroids. These corticosteroids can be given orally, IV as well as intraarticular. And the most important drug is colchicine which is given in the dose of 0.5 mg increments up to a maximum of 5 mg. Now the mechanism of action of colchicine is that it inhibits or it salvages the free radicals that are released as we discussed during the acute phase. It inhibits the leukotrienes, prostaglandins and interleukin 1. Now in cases of chronic gout, the main goal is to reduce the serum levels of uric acid and to prevent any acute flares from coming up. The first class of drugs are those which increase the excretion of uric acid. These are known as the uricosuric drugs. They are normally used in the patients who have a normal renal function and those who are excreting less than 800 mg per day of uric acid from their kidneys. Examples of uricosuric drugs are probenecid etodolac, phenofibrate and losartan. The second class of drugs are those that decrease the production of uric acid within the body. These are the xanthine oxidase inhibitors. They are usually used in patients who have an abnormal renal function, those who are excreting more than 800 mg per day and those who have a history of nephrolithiasis. This is because the use of uricosuric drugs in such patients can cause the precipitation of urate crystals in the kidney. Examples of xanthine oxidase inhibitors are allopurinol, which is a purine based inhibitor and febuxostat which is a newer non-purine based inhibitor. The third class of drugs are the uricase enzyme, example raspberrycase and peglotecase. This enzyme converts the uric acid into allantoin which is easily excreted by the kidney without any complications. And last but not the least, we have lifestyle modifications. We can reduce our dietary intake of uric acid by restricting beans, meat, anchovy, asparagus, etc. Weight loss also helps to decrease the uric acid levels in the body, decreasing our alcohol intake as well as increasing our water intake all help in decreasing the uric acid levels in our body. Thank you everyone for watching. Kindly like, share and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you have any corrections or any doubts.